Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, July 6, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time 2023. We have a lot in the news. Tomorrow is an expected coronal mass ejection impact on Earth's magnetosphere. The CME was ejected from a filament which released uh, over a day ago and should be making impact sometime on the 7th. We could have amazing auroras tomorrow night, so stay tuned. And this is lining up for the weekend, so it could be an aurora splash. The big story is Iceland. The Reykjanes Peninsula is lit up with earthquakes. 5,000 quakes in the last 48 hours, and an eruption appears imminent. Uh, there are multiple live cams, and we will report on them. Keep calm. It's boom time. On with the weather. Multiple waves of severe storms expected Friday and over the weekend, especially in Oklahoma. Right now, Denver, planes are under severe thunderstorm watches for threats of large hail. We're talking four inches, potentially, and destructive winds. Large hail upwards of two inches or greater and 75-plus mile-per-hour gusts are most likely from eastern Colorado through western Kansas and far northwestern Oklahoma. We're going to give you the forecast breakdown. Overnight, here is the severe storm threat, and it is very likely from Denver to Dodge City. So heads up, if you're in these regions overnight, you could be in that severe storm threat. It's going to move on Friday down south towards Denver and Oklahoma City, but the severe weather threat remains for all of the Central Plains Friday. And into Saturday, the severe storm threat becomes much more likely. From Casper, Wyoming, through Lamar, down through Oklahoma City, and all the way east to Memphis, the threat moves eastward Saturday. Hundreds of flights were delayed at Denver Airport due to the thunderstorms. The Denver airport was on ground delay through 11 p.m., according to the FAA. So heads up if you're traveling out there. Tennis ball-sized hail could hit heavily populated parts of Colorado. And here's the full forecast. Severe storms, possible flooding, and critical fire concerns, and excessive heat. Heading into the end of the week and weekend, severe thunderstorms are expected from portions of the high plains into the southern central plains. Thunderstorms and rain may produce flooding in the central, south central plains and parts of the northeast and mid-Atlantic. Critical fire weather conditions are likely in the Four Corners region as it is excessively windy and we're under red flag warning right now. We had gusts earlier today like 40, 50 miles per hour. Heat will produce dangerous conditions in the southwest and Texas, so heads up in the nexus of the Schmexus. Funny story, I just read an article about Lake Powell and how this summer people are going to be able to see regions that are exposed because Lake Powell is at the lowest level that it's ever been at. Now, that might have been true for April 12th, but for those that are in the know, we know that Lake Powell has risen 70 feet since that low. So all those quote-unquote exposed areas that you can see this summer, well, what a bummer if you drive all the way out here and realize that Lake Powell is higher than it's ever been in years. As well as Lake Mead, it is now 15 feet above the level it was last year in 2022. It is just about 10 feet away from the 2021 levels and still rising, which is completely against all of the patterns at the lake. So right now it should be flatlining, uh, shouldn't really start rising again until a uh, monsoon kicks in, but it has been rising continuously as that meltwater hits the drainage. Seismic update, interesting quake in uh, the eastern U.S. here, 2.7 in Hillsville, Virginia. Leave a comment below if you felt that one. Overall, no quakes of note except the, uh, the seismic activity that's happening up in Iceland, major Major uptick, thousands, up to 5,000 earthquakes so far, and the likelihood of a new volcanic eruption increases at Reykjanes. Let's do a quick worldwide volcano news update. We've got Fuego, Nevado de Ruiz, Seven Calle, and more. Nevado de Ruiz uh, puffing to 20,000, Seven Calle to 20. We also have the Reykjanes Peninsula. The seismic swarm has been more frequent over the past 12 hours and is essentially still continuing at the time of the update. Ubinus Volcano to 22,000 feet. Mayon still puffing. Popo to 22,000. Ubinus to 25,000. Quite significant uptick there. Reventador to 14,000. We've got Piton de la Fornas in La Réunion, France, which is uh, 
actually not. It's in Africa. A new cinder cone is forming and lava flow front stopped. Kluchiska volcano in the Kamchatka. Strombolian explosions continue and some gorgeous photographs there. And we do have a big uptick here at San Cristobal in Nicaragua. A spectacular eruption generated massive pyroclastic flows and spectacular photography. Take a look at this. Let's open the image up over here. Wow. Anyone on the flanks of this mountain would have been dead instantly. And this is quite a powerful explosion from the mountain here. The volcano showed very dramatic activity yesterday morning. An intense explosion took place from the summit vent, sending dense gray ash emissions, lapilli and lava bombs in various directions. The powerful eruption culminated in dilute pumice and ash flows caused by partial eruption plume collapse due to its higher density than the surrounding air. Pyroclastic flows tumbled down up to the base of the edifice. Let's take a look at this photo. Amazing power coming from San Cristobal. Let's take a look at some footage we have here thanks to the tweet box. And this is happening. You can see it dated there. Timestamp 5th of July, 2023, 512 p.m. local time. Altitude 1407 meters. And you're looking at Volcan San Cristobal. There is uh, some other footage here we could probably pull up that's quite spectacular. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes, compañeros de este grupo. Así está el volcán en este momento en San Cristóbal, ¿eh? tirando ceniza. En este preciso momento está tirando bastante ceniza. So once again, spectacular eruption coming from San Cristobal in Nicaragua. Pyroclastic flows are amazing. Now onward to the amazing uptick here at the Requianus Ridge. There is a warning. Intense earthquake activity and increased likelihood of a volcanic eruption on the Requianus Peninsula. Rock falls possible on the Requianus Peninsula due to ongoing earthquake activity, particularly close to Clevartin Town. Yes, increased conductivity also coming from Kotla Volcano. We have a one-two punch here. Over 5,000 volcanoes happening over the last three days. We have an area offshore here on the Requianus Ridge that is rumbling, as well as the original location near Fagradosval Mountain, where two effusive eruptions have already occurred, and it looks like number three is coming up. Now, interesting, the amount of uplift happening in this current seismic swarm eclipses all the uplift in the last two fissure eruptions. And according to the GPS, the movement is up to 50 millimeters in some location. That's over double what was recorded at the maximum in all locations in the last eruptions. Now, earthquake activity did start to drop around 4 o'clock in the evening, according to Icelandic Met Office. It seems to continue to drop, but it is now rising again just about three hours ago. Another uptick brought it right back up. Yes. So you can see that slope down over the last 24 hours and now an uptick. This is probably going to be leading to the imminent eruption happening anytime soon. During the days, earthquakes started to move south again towards Fagradosval Mountain. At the same time, the number of earthquakes dropped, but now they're increasing. And we also see an increase in that seismic tremor. See the drop off and now coming back up in slope here at... Oh, at all locations. So here we are at Grindavik down flat and let's refresh it. Yeah, it's coming back up again. So that seismic tremor is increasing at all locations. Let's refresh this. Yes, increasing. And seismic tremor here at Kreisuvik is increasing once again. So it looks like the eruption is imminent. There are multiple live streams that you can follow here on from icelandgeology.net. They link you below to all of the local live streams here. There's five of them. All the links will be linked below. Look for update on activity of Fagradosval Mountain if you want to click on any of these links. We'll also have Fagradosval live from Iceland as the sun sets there and is looking over where the last few fissure eruptions occurred. So it's pretty exciting. Things are developing in Iceland. Space weather news update. We had a partial halo CME the other day on July 4th. A partial coronal mass ejection in CME was observed early Tuesday and was the result of a filament eruption on the southeast quadrant. 
based on all telemetry, we do have um, a cor coronal mass ejection headed our way. There it is right here. And it's going to be full impact on the green ball we call Earth. Boom! Sometime between the 7th and 8th tomorrow. So just about 24 hours from now. Hours of powers. We also have a large sunspot. Let's take a look at the latest HMI intensity coming around the limb. Take a look at that baby. And that is the reemergence of another sunspot, which has now redeveloped and it's going to be earth facing in just about seven days. So stay tuned. We could be getting some more boom as we are in one of the weakest solar cycles in hundreds of years. Did you know it's National Fried Chicken Day? Well, I did, and now you do. Here's where to find discounted food with free delivery and more. But what's more important is that fried chicken should be enjoyed several times of year, but not as a staple. It is delicious, especially if you learn how to bread it and cook it yourself. So go get it. And even raise your own chickens, perhaps, because most of the food you eat is food for sheep and is contaminated. And nearly half of the nation's tap water is contaminated as well and contains PFAS, according to a new study. Americans living in urban areas are most at risk because they also, their tap water contains lead in most cases. Nearly half of the tap water in the United States is estimated to have at least one type of per and polyfluoroalkali substance or PFAS, according to a new national study. And they wonder why we're all gay or transgender, or confused, or whatever. Now, are you planning for the apocalypse? We are. We've been doing it for a decade. How about you come over and support the channel by supporting your whole preparedness? Yeah, I'm talking about My Patriot Supply, where you can prepare with the ranch now and get $80 off a four-week food supply. That's less than $3 a meal. $197 gets you a four-week emergency food supply for your whole family which would actually only last probably two weeks. And even a smaller kit, if you're a single person, just a two-week emergency food supply is all you need to survive and thrive, 127 bucks. And you can go big or you can go home. And they have other products like ones that will uh, filter PFAS out of your water, the Alexa Pure Pro Kit here at 491. Or you can get the Alexa Pure plus a, a cooker and a heater and food for just 523. That is the best deal and it is the Independence Day boom time. Yeah. So go get it. And we're not talking about that oven. No, we didn't want that. We don't want the oven. We want the whole shebang. So go check out the links below and get your preparedness jump started over at My Patriot Supply and prepare with the ranch and support the channel and support your arse. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please share this video as we need your help to grow as we are shadow banned. YouTube doesn't like the truth, but you do. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Bing.